For too long, our leaders have viewed politics as the art of the possible. And the challenge now is to practice politics as the art of making what appears to be impossible possible. Fear is always with us, but we just don't have time for it. Not now. That was Hillary Clinton, then Hillary Rodham, giving the student commencement address at Wellesley College in 1969. She was the university's first student speaker, tossing out her prepped and vetted remarks after the guest speaker was dismissive to the anti-war movement. After that address, she ended up in Life magazine, her first national news coverage. 47 years later, the Washington Post called it her breakout moment. Joining me now is the president of Wellesley College, Dr. Paula Johnson. Dr. Johnson, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So a two-part question here to kick us off as we, as we reflect on what could happen tomorrow night. If she ends up winning the presidency tomorrow night, winning the White House, how do you think it's going uh, to affect some of the younger, for example, younger female students at your college? Well, this is, you know, this is a transformational moment uh, for women's leadership. And it is very, very powerful for our young women, as well as our children, uh, and our young men, in fact. But to see the fact that a woman can achieve the most powerful job probably in the world. And for young women and young girls in particular, to be able to imagine themselves and to see themselves um, in Hillary Clinton, that is a tremendous motivator, and one that I think um, is, as I said, a transformational motivator as we think about developing the next generation of leaders. So, Dr. Johnson, then the flip side of that question, of course, is if she ends up not winning tomorrow night, if, in fact, it's Donald Trump who takes the presidency, how does that affect that same group of young people you're talking about? Well, you know, I would, I would think that the feeling will still be one that Hillary Clinton, that Secretary Clinton broke a glass ceiling. Even we if she doesn't she, win, she still shattered that glass even ceiling. Even if in she your hasn't, view. she's broken a glass ceiling. And I think that the motivation regarding moving forward will be just as strong the need to move forward, the need to address the issues that uh, women leaders address will only be felt um, incredibly strongly by the student population. My colleague Jane Tim has a really interesting write-up in NBCNews.com today, Dr. Johnson. She quotes a sociologist, Michael Kimmel, who said that Clinton has a fine line to walk if she is elected because she wouldn't only be president, she'd have to be, in his words, first mother as well. If you appear too feminine, he writes, they discredit you. If you appear not feminine enough, they discredit you too. You think she's going to be held to a different standard if she is elected? <laughs> Well, women are held to different standards. I don't think it's a will she be held to a different standard. She's already held it to a different standard, yeah. as are most women. And I think this is part of the challenge, a very significant challenge that we face. And in, in terms of the dichotomy of her roles, um, she is a singular person, the totality of all of who she is, as are we all as women. We are, we are women, we are mothers, we are grandmothers, we are daughters, we are friends. And when we bring our whole selves to our leadership roles, we don't separate those roles out. And I think that's the beauty of women's leadership, and that's what will be extraordinary. And it's what we address as we think about developing this next generation of women to face the challenges they will need to face. How do you bring the totality of who you are, which we know, in fact, brings much more powerful leadership? In, in this moment in time, that's part of what's so exciting, is that finally, uh, the totality of who women are being brought to leadership is finally being recognized as a very, very powerful force, not only in the United States, but quite frankly, around the world. Wellesley College President Dr. Paula Johnson, thank you very much for being with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.